All right, so we're gonna be replacing the battery, the charge port, as well as the SSD or upgrading to an SSD on this Dell Inspiron 13 5000 series laptop. Um, I'll confirm the exact model once I get this working. Anyways, the battery is bad, so this trackpad doesn't click properly. Charge port isn't plugging in all the way, so we're gonna replace that. And then it's super slow, so we're gonna replace the hard drive with an SSD. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, of course, make sure your computer's off. Go ahead and flip this over. And then we're gonna use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep them all in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put the flat side down like that. In the pattern, I remove them. So you got two there, three there, four there. And that's how I keep track of them. All right, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. This past week, I probably made like $40, $50 um, in work. If you've noticed, I haven't been posting a lot of computer repair videos. So um, yeah, please take that into consideration. Anyways, let's go ahead and finish with installing these components. So once we got all these screws out, we're gonna pop the bottom cover off. So the way you do that is you can get a pry tool. I just use my fingernails in this little gap here. Okay, and then depending how you do it, um, you can actually go from this side like that and then you can use your thumb to push out the palm rest while you're kind of pulling on it. And here you can see um, it pops out the cover. All right, so we're gonna do that just like this. All right, once we get that started, I'm gonna actually go from this side because it's a little bit easier. And we're just gonna go all the way around pulling up the cover, going around the edges here, okay? And this is after I kind of did the dishes so my fingernails are actually even more bendy than usual. But anyways, we're gonna go around, okay? Same thing, we're gonna keep popping this up, all right? This side's a little bit stuck here, but um, let's go ahead and, come on. All right, let's go ahead and go from this side again. So same thing get your fingernails in there and then pull and push with your thumb. Oops, I'm clipping the stuff back in as I pull out, pop out the other clips, but there we go. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and go around. All right, I'm gonna have to pop this side back out again because I accidentally popped it back in. Okay, there we go. All right, the back one is a little tough. Um, when I looked in it, actually a bunch of the clips are broken, but anyways, you get in there and same thing. I'm gonna use my thumb to push while I pull like that, but there we go. But there's multiple clips back here, all right? Once you get that, you can actually swing this up. There's some magnets holding it in place here and it pops out. So here you go. Um, here are the clips. You can see these, actually three of the clips are broken here. So those two and this one, all right? But um, that's what the inside looks like. Okay, I already cloned the hard drive to the SSD, so we're basically just gonna swap it out. All right, first thing we're gonna do is replace the um, the battery, or at least disconnect the battery, just to make it safer to work on. So there's four screws holding it in place. Again, you wanna keep all the screws in order. The battery model number is on the battery itself, WDX0R. So if you need that, there it is, WDX0R, okay? Go ahead and continue removing all the screws again there's only four screws holding the battery in place okay I might actually zoom in a little bit to make this easier to see because it's kind of far all right next thing we're going to do this battery cable is removable and as you can see on the replacement battery there's no connector here so what we're going to do is we're going to remove it from the battery side and we're going to leave this connected to the motherboard the way you do that, you lift this up slightly. Okay, we're gonna swing it out carefully. You wanna be careful not to damage this cable. And then try and grab as close as you can to the connector on both sides, pinching it like this. And you kinda just wiggle the battery as you hold that. Okay, and there you go. The connector comes out. Here's the battery. So here you can see it's like inflated. Okay, and that's why it's pushing on the back of the trackpad so it doesn't click. Here's um, the new battery, so you can see it's completely flat and actually it's indented instead of inflated out. Okay, so we're gonna set the battery aside here. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully open up the computer or the laptop. 
All right, you wanna slowly carefully do this since less screws are helping hold the hinges in place. And then we're gonna press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to make it safer to work on, all right? So right there, we're gonna hold that for about 15 seconds. And this will drain any residual power from the motherboard to make it a lot safer to work on. Again, if you do this without holding this button, there's a lot more risk that you can damage the computer. Um, it's not as important for what we're replacing right now, but uh, if you work on the screen or the LCD cables, then you definitely have to do this. Okay, so there we go. All right, next thing we're gonna do, again, um, since we're changing out the charge port here and the cables for the screen are here, um, I drained the power just to be safe um, because there is a chance you can accidentally pull this cable out. All right, anyways, so to remove the charge port, we're first gonna take this one screw out that's holding the charge port in place. Again, keep it um, in order because there are different screws. You don't wanna put the wrong one in there. All right, we're gonna disconnect this cable. Take note of how this is plugged in. You can see the red cables are here, then the white in the middle, and then the black are on this outer edge. All right, we're gonna use the wings here. I just use my fingernails to kind of wiggle this cable and pull it out. You wanna try and pull it as straight back as possible. You don't wanna twist it because you can bend the pins in there and those are pretty fragile. I've had some customers bring me theirs after trying to change their charge port and they bent all those pins and then you'd basically have to replace that charge port. All right, next thing we're gonna do, um, we're gonna open up the laptop, all right, 90 degrees. So just like this, and then while it's open like that, okay, we're gonna now undo the screws that are holding the hinge in place. There's two, all right, so you got, let me see here, you got this screw here, and then you got this screw here. So we're gonna remove those two. I know it's not gonna be a good angle, but I'm just gonna have to do it this way, because otherwise it's gonna be difficult to work on. All right, so again, keep track of those screws. You don't wanna get them mixed up. I am going to add some thread locker after doing this just so those screws don't come loose later. Um, but once you've done that, you can actually push this um, piece forward slightly away from the screen. All right. And that's just enough for you to lift this um, charge port out. Okay. All right. So next we're going to get the replacement charge port. Okay, again, you wanna make sure that the wires go the right way when you plug it in. But uh, for now, we're just gonna get the charge port into place. Um, this is, again, difficult to show on camera. I don't know how I can, yeah, I can't really show this on camera very well, but basically here you can see it separates. So now we can actually push this apart. Okay, so we're gonna just slide the charge port into there underneath. And you wanna be careful because we only can move it out so far. If you pull it out too far, you can actually damage the cables. Um, if you want, you can go the extra, um, do the extra route and pull out um, the cables completely. Um, but again, you wanna drain the power from the motherboard before you do that, okay? Anyways, I'm gonna get the small screw now and put that back in for the charge port. I know my hand's in the way, sorry. Okay, so now that we got that screw back in, we're going to put the two screws for the hinges back in. Okay, so again, I have to work on it kind of sideways like this. Let me get one of them in and then, or I'll loosely fit them and then I can flip it over so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're going to get these screws in here. Okay, just get those tightened in all the way. And... Once you've got both screws tightened in, it helps to kind of hold onto this. And then we're gonna squeeze this to close the screen. I'm doing that on both sides, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so that way the, um, the leverage isn't all on the screws themselves. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some thread locker. I like to use the red one because the blue one tends to come loose and sometimes people's screens will or the hinge mounts will get ripped out because the screws will be too loose. So let's go ahead and take that and we're gonna put a little bit of the red thread locker on there. Doesn't take much, not even a drop. I don't know if you can see, but that's it. Okay, and we're gonna do that for, I'm gonna do that on all four screws actually just to be safe since we open this up. Okay, let's go ahead and get that. 
I'm going to do it off to the side because I don't want to risk dripping the stuff onto the motherboard. Okay. And you don't want to put a crazy amount because um, the stuff can cause the plastic to be become brittle. So you don't want to overfill the thread locker and then cause the plastic to break as well. Okay. I didn't get a tiny bit on here. Just like that. <clears throat> I know most people are probably just waiting for the uh, RAM or SSD upgrade. We'll get to that soon. Maybe I should make that a separate video, but um, well, we'll just do it all in one. Okay. Go. Oh, I'm putting too much. I need to wipe the excess off. Okay. All right, so now we got all those screws in. Should be good. Again, we're gonna have to, you wanna make sure to plug this in the same way. So you can see the red is going towards the outside and the black is going towards the inside. So we're gonna have to kind of twist this a little. So this cable, let's go ahead and curve it just like the old one. You don't have to do it exactly the same, but however will fit. This cable is a little bit longer than the original. Oh. Let me show you another thing. So if you look at the connector, the pins are higher on one side. So if you plug this in upside down, you will basically just bend all the pins inside the port. So again, it's very important you plug it in the right way. And the pinholes want to be closer to the top. Okay, so we're going to get this in. And again, you also want to make sure it goes in straight. You don't want it going at an angle. Okay, just like this. Come on, there we go, get it lined up. And then once you have it all lined up, you can pinch both together. And there we go. So we got the charge port connected. All right, so let's go over replacing the hard drive now. Again, we cloned the hard drive in advanced. So we're going to now take the hard drive out and put the SSD in. I don't know if there's supposed to be a screw there. Actually, that's probably the screw mount for the other one. Again, you wanna keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. So it's very important that you don't mix them up. Okay, so we got those two screws out. Let's go ahead now and lift this up. Okay, and then I'm not gonna be disconnecting it, but the hard drive connects to the motherboard here. They actually put some tape to hold this in place. I'm just gonna get my fingernail in here and pop the connector out just like that. Hopefully you can see. Okay, and then pull the connector out completely. Now we're gonna just transfer this um, hard drive, caddy, tray, whatever you wanna call it, to the SSD. So there's four screws holding that in place. Let's get those out. Okay. I have a customer calling me right now. Let's go ahead and remove these four screws. Okay, so now that we got those four screws out, we can pop the hard drive out of here. So just grab it like that, and here you can take the hard drive out. Okay, we're gonna get the SSD now, and basically just put it back in the same way that we took the other one out. Okay, I might have to kind of, put it, there we go. Slide it in like that. All right, and now we're just gonna get the four screws back in. So we are gonna go over all the different connections inside here as well. So let's just go ahead and get these done first though. So. Okay. Go. All right. So now we got all four screws in. We got this bracket for the SSD. We're gonna click it back into this connector and you want to actually hold the connector and then push the hard drive itself. All right. So that way you don't accidentally like yank the connector out. Then we're just going to line this stuff back up and get those screws back in. Okay. So we have this screw down here. All right. And we have this screw up here. All right. Now for the other thing that people are probably watching for the Ram. So there's one stick of RAM here and this slot's actually empty. So you can add a second stick of RAM. We're gonna pull these two tabs to the side. The stick of RAM should pop up like that. Then you can go ahead and pull it back. 
Here you can see it's an 8 gig PC4 2400T. So if you want, you can put another 8 gig PC4 2400T and have 16 gigs total. Um, the most important uh, thing is the PC4 2400T. If you use different RAM, it might not boot up. So keep that in mind. This thing's really floating in here. So let me clean that up a little bit. Fans a little. All right. Let's go ahead and get the stick of RAM back in. Okay, and now let's just go over all the other connectors we got in here. So we got the keyboard, whoa, what's all that noise? We got the keyboard connector here. We got the keyboard backlight connector here. We have this connector here that's going underneath for the trackpad. Um, you got this connector here for the notification light here for the battery charging and everything. And then we have this connector that connects everything to the motherboard. I have a customer calling right now, so I'll be back. All right, sorry about that. I just got a call. So anyways, um, so we went over the RAM. Let's go finish going over everything. So we already went over all these connectors down here. All right, hard drive connector. This one, you just pull that up. Battery connector. This one's pretty tough to kind of pull out. I usually have to use a small flathead screwdriver to help pull this in this little gap here in that little plastic raised area while I pull the connector out. You don't want to get any of these metal pins shorted with the metal tool though, so be careful with that. CPU is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't do anything with that. You got these two connectors here. I believe this is for the LCD LVDS, um, the screen connector, and this is most likely for the touchscreen digitizer and the camera, things like that. All right. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to mess around with that, but if your touchscreen is acting up, you can try disconnecting this and see if that fixes it, but then you'll likely lose the camera. All right, you got the speaker connected right here. This has the wings. You kind of just wiggle and pull it back, and then it runs along over here to the other speaker. All right, then you got the power button and volume buttons here connected by a cable up to here. So if those buttons break, you can replace that, um, and you just plug it there. You got the BIOS, CMOS, RTC, real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it, is plugged right there. So if you pull that out, that will you can reset the BIOS that way. You can pull that battery out and short the two pins. All right, then you got this cable. It's uh, the IO cable for all these input output devices here. SD card slot, USB port, um, and then you got the wireless card here for the wireless antennas. All right, um, and if you wanna see how to remove the wireless card, you can watch some of my other videos. I show that in all of them. Then you got the fan here and the fan connectors right there. And I think that's pretty much all there is to this. It looks like they reused this motherboard for multiple things because there's a connector here. I think that's for USB-C because they have all these tiny pins here. But um, yeah. All right, anyways, let's go ahead now and put the battery back in and then we can reassemble the laptop. So the battery, again, we're gonna slightly put it at an angle like this. Make sure this lines up completely, okay? And then we're going to just push that in. All right, make sure it's completely lined up. And then push that in all the way. It helps to kind of push on the outside of the connector here. All right, then we're going to swing this back over. Make sure everything's lined up. And then let's get these four screws back into place to hold the battery down. All right, I'm just loosely fitting the screws right now to make sure everything lines up properly. And once we get everything lined up, then we can go ahead and tighten all the screws into place. All right, let's go ahead now and tighten those screws down. Just like that. There we go. All right, and then we just gotta put the cover back on. So let's zoom out a bit here. Okay, zoom out a bit more. There we go. All right, so this cover kind of goes on at an angle. Um, well, I guess it doesn't really matter which side, but you can put the magnet side in first, and then you can kind of click those, make sure those latches all click into place or the clips go into place, and just push it all in. Make sure everything looks lined up and clicked down. All right, and then we're just going to now put back the screws. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So. Um, you're welcome to stay as I finish putting back all the screws, and then we're going to, of course, power it up, plug it in, make sure everything is working, and yeah, we'll also find out what the exact model number of this 
Inspiron laptop is. Hopefully I can figure it out. Um, I'll probably just put it in the title instead of like looking it up, but usually you can find out in the BIOS. Um, but let's see. Okay. So we're going to test it on battery power. We're going to test it while it's plugged in and yep, see how everything works. So we're almost done. If this video helped you, again, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing well to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see how it goes. The customer brought a third-party charger, so we're going to try that to make sure their charger's working okay. It's lighting up. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. When we plug it in, this light should come on. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And there you go. So it is, or it came on for a bit. I think the battery's already charged. So let me see. Because I was actually doing this last night to plug it in and charged up that battery. So what you want to do to make sure everything's working okay, you power it up, press F2. Um, just keep pressing F2 to get into the BIOS or the setup. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the, um, where is it, battery information. So here you can see primary battery, 100%. Health is excellent. AC adapter power, 65 watts. So since you see that, you know that the battery is okay and the AC adapter is okay. Let's see if it shows the model number. I see the service tag number, so I'll have to look it up later. I don't see the exact model number here. Yeah, they don't tell you what the model number is here. So I'll figure that out later. Anyways, um, it's turning on now. Let's go ahead and make sure that it boots up completely to Windows. And we should be good to go. I did clone, again, the hard drive to the SSD. So it is booting. We should be good to go. We're going to let it finish booting completely. And then we'll consider this completed. So... This computer is taking a while to boot up. There we go. It is a lot faster than before with the original hard drive. It was spinning like forever nonstop, but there you go. All right, so hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye. Oh, yeah, one more thing. The trackpad is clicky now. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.